Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second in a row of Security Summit webinar series. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you are all safe and secured. Today with us, we have guests from two companies, FrogBlue and Tent. FrogBlue is a company that specializes in the design and production of intelligent modules, known as a part to be uh, of intelligent building technology. On another side, we have Tent company that offers comprehensive solutions and assistance in design, implementation and maintenance of efficient information infrastructures. Regarding the questions, you can ask the questions uh, on your right side of your monitor or you can directly write to our, our direction, redaction, so we will uh, later ask the speakers. Now I will call Alesh to make a short introduction to the webinar. Alish, you are here. The stage is yours. Hvala. Uh, thank you. Uh, ja ću vas pozdraviti na, na tako ja zovem uh, srbo, hrvatski, bosaš, bosanski, slovenački jezik. Tako da dobrodošli. So, da ste si uzeli toliko vremena da, da nas slušate. Uh, vrlo mi je drago um, da vam pre, prezentiramo jedno odlično rješenje i uh, Frog Blue. Uh, mi kao Tent kompanija, uh, mi smo njihov kompetenčni centar za to regiju i vrlo se veselimo potencijalnog budućeg suradnje sa, sa vama, ako vam bude stvar interesantna. Uh, tu smo za vas, uh, tako da, evo, daš je drago. Pa da ne gubim previše vremena u ovim trenutkima, nadam se da ste svi ok i zdravi. Uh, potpuno različite su situacije u našim u regijama i u regiji, ali pandemija je tu, tako da svi skupa se pripremamo da kad izađemo iz nje, bit ćemo još jači pa sa, no, sa novim poslovima i, i dobrim odnosima. Jer inače ne bi radili webinara i vidjeli bi se i družili se bi uživo, pa baš mi bilo drago na ovim prostorijama gdje god dođemo, dobro smo, do, uvijek smo dobrodošli i, i, i imamo se fino. So, I will now continue in English. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my colleagues from Frog Blue. First of all, Peter McKee, uh, who is Executive Vice President of Frog Blue uh, for International Sales. And uh, he will present to you some general presentation and basically potential business expansion uh, for you. Uh, the second one is uh, colleague Jörg Keber, who is Inside Sales Manager and uh, uh, he is very, very uh, good technician, and he will introduce to you uh, the more or less more technical part, more more practical part of, uh, of how to use and what is from Blue. Uh, the picture you don't see and the guy who see you see now online uh, live is my colleague Bustian, uh, and me and him we will more or less he will introduce to you uh, some study case how can you, how can you use uh, frog blue and how can you easily uh, integrate it with some solution in this case uh, intelligent robotics cameras so peter you're welcome and uh, uh, we'll enjoy it, please okay so i will now share my screen Hopefully you can all see it. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, good. Well, first of all, thank you to AS Adria uh, for organizing the, the webinar. And also a big thank you to our friends and colleagues at TEND for helping to put it all together. I will say more about TEND in a minute. Uh, it is with great pleasure that uh, I have this opportunity to introduce you to Frog Blue, the uh, concept of Frog Blue, the potential of Frog Blue, and also a bit about who we are. First of all, why did we even start uh, to look at intelligent building technology and smart home technology? It was really because we were looking for a solution to use in our own premises uh, and we very quickly noticed that there were certain things that were missing in the market you could get different bits from different places or there was um, let's say uh, restrictions with some of the the systems so we decided that we would create a system that was easy to install 
very scalable, very secure, and also importantly, easily affordable. So during this presentation, I will show you how uh, all those things come together in the Frog Blue solution. First of all, who are we? Who is Frog Blue? Frog Blue are a family owned company. We're based in Germany. Uh, the founder of Frog Blue is, is also the founder of the camera manufacturer Mobotics. And Mobotics, I'm sure a lot of you will be aware of, they were the first intelligent IP network camera system on the market. Um, the development, all the in-house product development is done obviously by ourselves and a large part of that team are the same team that put Mobotics together and put Mobotics on the map. Um, similar to the Mobotics uh, system or concept, we specialize in robust and very reliable hardware on which we run our smart intelligent software. So both hardware and software are developed by us. We have the highest standards of quality uh, and everything is created and produced here in Germany. So 100% made in Germany. Also, um, I mentioned our partner in the region TEND. Frog, one of the reasons we talk about the robotics connection is first of all to give everybody an idea of our pedigree. We are relatively new as a company, Frog Blue, but we have many, many years of experience in uh, creating innovative products and concepts and also in uh, creating uh, global partner networks. And although Tend have been a partner of Frog Blue for about two years now. Uh, I have personally, through the robotics years, worked with uh, Alish and the team for over 20 years. So you can see that we may be the new kid on the block, but we have a lot of experience behind us. So what makes Frog Blue interesting to the installer and to the end user? First of all, no more cable routing, easy installation, no switch cabinet required, and no extra modules required for drivers, etc. in either the fuse box or any other part of the system. Another big plus is no IT installation. You are not uh, faced with any IT, costly IT maintenance. Uh, there's no IT training involved, so it's a very easy, straightforward system to install. Another big difference between Frog Blue and most, if not yeah, the vast majority of other systems on the market, we do not require a central unit. The frogs themselves are all independent. Uh, they all have the intelligence embedded in the frogs themselves. So we will continue with that theme a bit later. We do not require a cloud. We do not require an internet connection. That means that with other systems, the smarts are on the cloud. The software is on the cloud. With our system, the software is in every individual device in the system. The no internet necessary what that means is basically you can configure the system without any internet connection you can run the system as a completely closed secure system without any internet access however there may be situations where internet is maybe not required but maybe desired and we will cover that a bit later we wanted a secure system, so one, that's one of the reasons we went with Bluetooth. Bluetooth has its own encryption, and we added the 128-bit Frog Blue encryption on top of that with a timestamp on every message that is sent from every frog. So once a message has been sent, the timestamp is to a split second, and that means once it's been sent, it will not be accepted again so after it's been sent it is completely um, 
useless. Nobody can hack the system, grab a message and use it again. What I will show you now is a video of a renovated villa, about 450 square meters, and there are about 130 frogs inside this building. There are a further 100 frogs throughout the grounds controlling everything from lighting, shuttering, shading, uh, ventilation, swimming pool lights, uh, external security lights. The whole system is controlled by Frog Blue. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate here is the speed with which the frogs communicate with each other. One of the questions we always get asked is how quickly can the, the frogs pass on a message to another frog? This is important because it also uh, concerns the range of the frogs. The frogs will pass on messages to each other across any range. So we are not limited by the normal Bluetooth range. You will see here with one click, which we call panic function, you can switch on all the lights in the entire building. So if someone comes home late at night, it's dark, they want to make sure the building is safe, they switch on the lights, then if there is an intruder, they quickly realize somebody's come home. So as one click of the switch, you see the lights go on very, very quickly. They communicate very quickly, and that is also down to our own software. You may have noticed in the left-hand corner, the lights went on slightly later than the others. This is due to the LED drivers in the lamps themselves. It is not uh, anything to do with the Bluetooth signal. So apart from lights, we also do heating, shading, alarms, and many, many other things within the, the building uh, control, the intelligent building management. Uh, we do it all without control cables, etc., and we have a very low power consumption. What is also important to note in, about our system is you can use your smartphone or tablet or the frog display to control the system but you can also physically control it from every light switch, which means for people who want to have the benefits of a smart, intelligent solution, however, they can't or won't use a uh, software smartphone or whatever, they can also control the system via every light switch in the building. And that's important for maybe elderly people or people who have a disability and cannot use the smartphone. I spoke about the intelligence being in every frog. This is what we refer to as the decentralized system. Every frog is capable of receiving messages, analyzing the messages, and passing the messages on to other frogs to forward to other frogs. So you have literally a living mesh network. Um, the intelligence in the frogs themselves is what makes us uh, different. That's a decentralized concept. You can have the frog installed behind the light switch where that is possible. Where it is not possible, you can have the frog installed anywhere in, in the system where there is space and you have access to 230 volt power. Uh, as you can see here, you can install them in the lamps themselves, in the junction boxes, or indeed anywhere where there is space for the frogs. Why did we choose Bluetooth? Bluetooth is obviously the global standard for wireless communication. It's in basically everything that uh, is available today. There were 4.6 billion units sold in 2020, they expect about 5 <clears throat> billion in 2021. Uh, so over the a space of two years, 10 billion devices that are capable of running Bluetooth. And that is why we decided Bluetooth was not just the way to go just now, but also for the future. And we'll talk later about how Frog Blue is indeed a future-proof system. Um, so it's integrated in every smartphone and tablet, radio isn't, 
that was just one of the reasons we didn't go for radio communication. Uh, Bluetooth is less prone to interference than Wi-Fi and radio. Also, it's easier to physically install and also maintain. Uh, Wi-Fi generally uh, involves some hardware installation and also some software installation. With us, everything is very straightforward, very easy to install. We have the encrypted uh, as standard, the encryption as standards. Low power requirement of Bluetooth was also very important because we have Bluetooth devices, uh, sorry, battery devices running on Bluetooth, which can run up to 10 years without changing the battery. And that is because of the low power requirement. Uh, they create an instant low energy mesh network, which the others do not. Uh, and as I mentioned, the automatic forwarding of messages to destinations, i.e. other frogs, is made possible via Bluetooth. Also part of the intelligence is logic. Each frog, each device has a logic module included. And this basically is uh, operating on an if this, then that basis. So if this happens, do that. If that happens, do this. If this happens on a certain day at a certain time and the weather conditions are a certain way, then do something else. So it's basically expansion of logic throughout the system. And that is our software. Uh, and that is a big difference between FrogBlue and other systems that are out there. We can also accept signals and alarms from third party devices also from central control units like a weather station. So any of the information that is available through your security alarm signals, etc., can be used by the frogs. Data backup is also a big part of the uh, intelligence of the system. Everything is automatically monitored. Uh, you're automatically uh, informed if the system uh, has been changed and it should be backed up. Everything is backed in one file, so it's very easy to store. It can be stored on one frog, it can be stored on every frog, or your tablet, or a USB stick. It's also very easy to share with uh, installers on site, and everything is password protected. An overview of the frogs, just briefly. Um, we have different categories of frogs. We have the actuators, which are designed for turning system on and off. We have the dimming frogs, which not only turn the lights on and off, but also have the capability of dimming the lights. You will see the numbers after the description, the 101113, et cetera. The first number is the number of outputs that the frog has. The second number is the number of inputs. We also have relay frogs for controlling motor-driven devices, for example, uh, shutters, awnings, things of that nature. We have a potential free version of the relay frog. We also have frogs with uh, only inputs, where no in outputs are required, basically just to control the rest of the system. We have frog contact for potential free connections, uh, window connections, etc. We have access control frogs which control door locks, uh, door opening systems. We have frog clock which synchronizes all the frogs in the system. All the frogs obviously have to be in the same time because a lot of the, the functionality is time-based. The frog clock also acts as a repeater within the system. If you have a distance greater than what the frogs can communicate with uh, over Bluetooth, putting in a frog clock will repeat and boost the signal. As I said, we also have battery powered frogs for areas where there is no power available, or perhaps after the installation, somebody says, well, actually we need a control there, we need a switch there, or we need a button there. Then the frog battery is um, the one to go for. We also have other frogs in development, including analog frogs, uh, KNX Bridge and Dali Bridge, which will be out 
sometime in the not too distant future. As I said, software makes a, bi a big difference to our system. And what that means is once you have frogs in the system controlling different parts, this is also the uh, scalability of the system. Perhaps you start in the building with controlling lighting. You want an intelligent lighting system. And then you say, well, we could also add the door locks to that system. So you add the frogs, you can put the frogs in for the shutters. So wherever you put the frogs for the shutters, ventilation, heating, door lock security, they all automatically communicate with each other. And that's where the logic comes back into the, the uh, equation. Every part of that system can talk to every other part of that system. And based on the parameters set for each part of the system, they can interact. So for example, the shutters going down can raise the, the level of lighting in the building. The, um, the humidity going up can turn on the, the ventilation. The temperature rising can affect the, the, the heating. Or if, for example, a window opens, a signal can be sent to the heating saying, turn off the, the heating in this room because somebody has opened the window or you can send an alarm saying, do you want the heating on? So basically every part can integrate and communicate with every other part of the system. A further example of the scalability of the system is starting a, an intelligent dimming system with one frog. You have one frog, the dim to two, which has two outputs for controlling circuits of 300 watt LEDs. Um, that means that you can have uh, synchronized dimming, you can have separate control of each section. So you could have a, an open plan living room, dining room with uh, both lighting systems working in synchronized or in independent fashion. The dim to two uh, can also then be part of the ongoing system but what i'm saying is basically you have a uh, intelligent dimming system with one frog so you can add an additional frog which will give you additional input there is no connection physical connection between the frogs they automatically communicate over the bluetooth mesh system so you can see you have a scalable and a very affordable system the next part of our portfolio are what we call the cubes, the frog display, the frog <coughs> axis, and the frog motion. The frog display is basically our, one of the, the functions is the gateway to the world. This is how we connect with the outside world. We spoke before about no internet being necessary. However, in today's modern world, uh, control of the system remotely is a big uh, request. So we have made it possible to control the system remotely via uh, internet to your smartphone, everything encrypted with the Frog Blue and the Bluetooth encryption. If you do not have an internet connection, you can connect via the SIP server to a, a normal telephone call. You can send alarms pre-recorded alarms from the display to the telephone. So for example, door open, window open, light on. Uh, if you're not in the building, then you can um, interact with the system using the keypad on your smartphone. Um, you can also set scenes in the display. The display has a whole host of different uh, functions and it also acts as a control unit for the devices. You can also show your camera on there. It also has a, an integrated sound. You can, with a Mobotics camera, for example, you can have a two-way audio communication and uh, image from the camera using the display. The display also acts as a bridge between buildings that are far apart, where it's five kilometers or 500 kilometers or 5,000 kilometers, you can connect frog blue systems uh, from building to building via the display as a bridge. 
Another cube is the frog motion. It's called frog motion, but it is much more than a motion detector. It is uh, also has capabilities to detect room temperature, brightness levels, and all these functions can be used for triggering alarms and controlling the lights and the heating in the system. It also has a built-in LED, which can act as a warning light, or for example, as a night light. So in, in the evening or late at night, if you get up during the night, it can sense the motion and also act as a night light without having to turn on all the main lights. And you see from the diagram here, as soon as you add the frog motion or any other uh, device to the system, it becomes part of the system. We have the frog access. The frog access is basically a pin entry system. Uh, which allows access control and also system control. So you can open doors. It also has an integrated doorbell. It can control opening and locking functions. It can also, uh, through the multifunctional sensors, proximity, ambient temperature and brightness sensor, it can also interact with the system to tell the system to do certain things at certain times under certain conditions. The pin codes can also be used for uh, other aspects of the system, not just uh, access control, you could have a, con a pin code for opening the door and turning on the lights in certain parts of the building. So there's really no limit to what you can do with the Frog Blue system once these different uh, devices are installed. And as I said, you can start with one and you can go all the way to uh, a complete integrated control of an intelligent building. The Frog Multisense is a small, it's um, about the size of a, a matchbook. It's a small sensor that you can put basically anywhere you it's required. It will measure room temperature, humidity, brightness, and also air pressure. Uh, air pressure is um, sometimes a requirement in uh, industrial applications or in medical applications, uh, scientific laboratories where air pressure has to be maintained at a certain level. So this is something that we can introduce to the system. It, and that's another point of um, the flexibility of Frog Blue. We cover many, many different kinds of installations from a straightforward smart home to a complicated commercial building to apartment buildings and also industrial applications. Um, the Frog Multisense is, runs on the battery and as I said before, 10 year battery operation is standard in the devices and the window or the door opening detection using magnetic contacts or the acceleration sensor, the gyro sensor can interact with the system. If the doors open, it can be a security, it can be part of the heating system, whatever you want. The other thing it will measure is vibration or shock. So should somebody try to open the window or try to break the window, immediately it will send a, an alarm to the central system, which can then uh, turn on lights or sound an alarm or indeed turn on the cameras in the uh, in the vicinity. We also have a heating controller uh, for heating valves, for underfloor heating, for electric radiators. And this is basically made up of five potential relay outputs within the box. Uh, it also has additional virtual outputs for controlling distant frogs uh, within the building, two inputs for detection, so you can add buttons, switches, anything that you require. And you see from the diagram here, the multi-sense is an integral part of the heating and cooling system. The whole system can be controlled via smartphone and display or physical switch, as I said earlier. and also the transponder. The transponder is a key fob, which is position and gesture sensitive. 
To briefly explain what that means, the key fob has a directional sense and it also has a button in the center. So if you point it up and use the button to control lights, one click on, two clicks off, three clicks, 50% dimming, uh, click and hold, 80% uh, dimming. So you can control all the aspects of the lighting when you're holding the frog up. If you're holding it straight ahead, this is just an example, you can be controlling the door locks, the door opening system, pointing it down. You can control the, uh, the shuttering or the shading system in the building. So one click down, two clicks up, three clicks, 50%, click and hold, change the slap position. All these things are possible with that one small transponder or frog key as we call it. So that is very intelligent, but on top of that, we can also change mode by when we go to certain rooms. So the frog key will realize it will, um, when you go into a certain, another room, it will automatically uh, recognize which project or room it is in and also which frogs it is allowed to communicate with in that room. So not only is it uh, position and gesture sensitive, it is location sensitive. So for example, in an office building where you have multiple people, multiple offices, you can uh, everybody can have the frog key and that will allow them to access their own office, their own lighting system, maybe other offices depending on the level. So you can have a very flexible, versatile keyless system for the office. Um, the home app is what the user, end user uses, and I'm going to pass you over to Jörg, who will explain this in greater detail. Basically, he will give you an overview of how to configure the system by using names to create virtual cables. And um, that was basically it. We will have question and answers at the, uh, at the end of Jörg's presentation and uh, Bossian's presentation. And uh, over to you, Jörg. Thank you, Pete. So I will share my screen now. Jörg, uh, I was just sure to interrupt you uh, regarding the sharing screen. And the OK. Part. So just uh, one uh, surprise for all our visitors. We prepared uh, like three uh, rewards, three prizes. So for those that are active and that ask the questions in the chat on the right side of the monitor. So ask the questions, later on you will be provided with the answer after the presentations and win a prize. So uh, York, you can continue now. Okay, see my screen. Uh, I will do this short presentation of our configuration app with my iPad, you can also have this uh, configuration app for Android devices or Windows system. Uh, you will find it on our homepage if you go to uh, the support part and down there to software <coughs> you can see these three uh, possibilities to get configuration app, the Blue Blowjack app. You also can find here the Frog Blue Home app and the firmware for our display. Once you install it, you can find it on the surface of your home page. And if you start it, you will see this screen. First, you have to do is to set up a new project. For this, you go to this icon, click on it, and this window will appear. Here, you can answer the name. Doesn't matter which one you choose here. And you can also give some information about the project, what's the name of the electrician, the owner, the owner mail, uh, the phone number, and some other notices you can make. And um, then you can go to create project, and to protect this project, you have to enter here, a set here, a project password which has to be eight characters long. To make it easy, I will write there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have to confirm and go to OK. 
and then you have set up your first uh, frog group project and now you can start to add the frogs and add rooms like it is in the building of your customer. I won't recommend to first start with the rooms you have maybe in your customer's building uh, or house. For this you go over there to this plus in the upper left corner, go to it and this window will appear. Now you can add a room. You see, if I click on it, do it again, go to add room, over there the rooms will appear. Now I have added three rooms and I can go on with uh, give them the name like they are really are in the building. For this I go to this pad over there, you see that? I go on it and it will have a green background. Then I click on the room and change the name into first room, the second one, maybe living room, and the last one, the bedroom. So if I done that, I, as I said before, I do it like this, that the, the rooms are really in the, in the customer's building. I can go on with adding the frogs to this project. With this, I go to this plus again, and there are two ways to add the frogs to the system. You can, if you have really installed the frogs, they are connected to 30, uh, 230 volt power, you can go to search frog, you can select all devices and the frogs will appear and you can select them and add them to the project. If you are not in the customer's building, maybe you are in your office having all the frogs you want to install in the customer's building, you can go to this plus over there and go to add frog. And now you can select the kind of device you want to install in the customer's building. Go to select device type and now you see the, the frogs, the, the modules you have um, in a uh, pre-selected column. You can move and now select the one you want to add. Maybe this frog relay to two, select it, and then you can write there the MAC address, which is the uh, unique identifier of the frog, which is printed on the back side of the frog. Go to OK, and now you have added it. I want to add a second frog. which is a dimming module, a dim frog. It's this one over there. Go to it, go to OK, and now it's added to the frog project app. Now, by clicking on the left column of the project app, you can select this frog. And now you see some information appear two other columns. Uh, what they mean, on the left column, you find all the frogs, all the devices you have uh, added in the project. In the middle, you will find some information about the frog, like the wall gadget have, the time will should be shown, if the frog is uh, uh, controlling a device and it will turn the device on, you will see there the power consumption of the frog, you will have the inside temperature of the frog. And in the right column, you will see the configuration. So, but the first thing I want to do is set the room in the frog, in the broad, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the room of the, in the project app, which is really should be physical installed in the customer's building. For this, I go to this field, go to select it and select, move it into the living room. Now you see it, it's moved from the standard room over there to the living room. And the second one, 
I will move to the bedroom, maybe. Now you see we have this. Both frogs move to the rooms which are physically installed and I can go on doing the configuration. I will first start with this dimming frog. As I said before, you have there in the middle the information about the frog and on the right column you can see the configuration. Now it's very easy to do this configuration. So first you go to this output. This frog has is a D22, which means it has two outputs and two inputs, which been shown here on the right side. First, I have to define what does, does this uh, this uh, output control. In this case, I go to this bulb with this question mark, click on it, and then I can select what's connected to the output of the frog. In this case, I select a dimmable light because it's a dimming frog. And also I can do it with an output B. It's another circuit of dimmable lights too, so I select it. Now I have make a definition what is connected to the output, in this case a dimmable light. Now I have to give a signal which makes this output react. If a button is clicked in the system, this signal will be sent to the system and all the frogs, they have it on, defined on the output, react. They turn the light on or off. I go to this line, click on it, and now I can give the signal a name like I want to have to it. Maybe it's Lights living one and go to enter. Now you see it's red. I will later explain what these red characters mean. First, I go to the out B and give them another signal which makes them react like lights living. Two, because maybe in the living room there are two light circles which I want to control. Now I go to the inputs. As I done by the uh, outputs, I now make a definition what the inputs have to do. I go to this question mark, this button with the question mark, go to if, and then I can make a selection what this input is. Is it a button light? Is it a button dim? Is it a button for shutter up or shutter down, a bell, etc, uh, etc. Et and in this case I want to define it as a button dim because I want to control the dimming lights which are connected to the output. In this case a this type message will appear. Uh, what this type message uh, is, I uh, it's maybe a part of another webinar we want to do together. Um, I delete it and I want to control with this input the living light one. And you see, if I start to write this signal, I have here a pre selection possibility. And I just can click this pre selection and the light living is selected. And now you see the message is turning from this red to white. That means I have made a connection between an input which is in the system to an output which is in the system to control with this input the output. The same I will do with this in B. Select it. Lights living too. Select it, turning from red into white. And then if the frog is already connected to 230 volt power. I can write this configuration to the frog by clicking on this icon and then the configuration is done. And I can start to control the system. Another example I want to give is a, to show you how easy it is to configure a shutter plant Contr ref store control. 
to control the shutter or blind or something like that, we have this relay fork. The relay fork is uh, able to control up to six amperes, which is very uh, 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 what is uh, the needed power to control a motor like a shutter motor, and it is protected against a motor feedback, which is can be given by uh, turning a motor off. I select it, and you see the configuration shows nearly the same uh, as it is in the frog dim to two we have two outputs and two inputs it's an for controlling a shutter so i go to this uh, bulb with a question mark and select a shutter up because i have to control a shutter up function and a shutter down function select it enter a signal shutter up to make it easy, enter it, go to the out B, and this should be the shutter down function. And go to enter. The signals are red. I go to the in A because the in A is connected to the buttons which I want to use to move the shutter upwards and downwards. I go to this question mark, select it. The first one should be the shutter up. Delete this type message and start to write the shutter up. I have this pre selection, can select it. Go to shutter down. Delete this type message. And I have done the first step of the shutter configuration. But in the shutter there, you have possibilities to have some position driving. Maybe you want to have a, a full movement up or downward, or you want to have shut a 50% position movement. To doing this, I have to do a measurement. To start this measurement on the shutter down, the out B, you click on this icon, on the shutter icon, which is red marked. And then you see some information. You have there this end stop detection, which make the, uh, the shutter stop, the, the, the frog stop the, to give power to the motor is in this end. And you can start a measurement. You can click on it, go to continue, and then I have no connections to a real frog, so I have to simulate that. Um, I can hear this the shutter move totally up until end stop, and then I can start the measurement. Now, if I start the measurement, it will took the time which the shutter take from move from totally up to totally down. You can also do these configurations manually by just selecting the seconds it needs to move. Maybe it's uh, 60 seconds. And if you have a rough stir installed, you can also have a reverse time of the slats. Maybe these are one second. And if you have this both, you can go to OK. And now you see this icon is not longer red marked again, it's green marked. And you have this time it takes to move the shutters. Now, what can you do with it? You can also have, you can have a second signal which be sent by maybe double click on a button for this you go to this plus over there and set okay you see there is an arrow appearing click on it and then you have a second signal line and now what i want to do with the second signal line is say okay if i press the button two times i will move the shutter to 50 percent for this I go to this line over there, select it, and now I see you have some possibilities to say which uh, makes the button you press uh, sending the signal. Normally you have this one click, that means if you click one time, the lights will go on, uh, on or off, the, the shutter will move up or down, and you have this rising and falling, which is 
to chosen to have a switch connected to the system. You have also this level, this long, this click level, this long. So you see, you have many possibilities to have some uh, signal sending by clicking on a button. In this case, I want to have a double click, select it, and write there the same message, the same signal I've done before. Shutter up. But I want what I now do is to say, okay, I want to have not have this totally movement. I want just have the fifty percent. For this, I go to this shutter icon, click on it, and now I can select the position I want the shutters to drive. Maybe in this case, fifty percent, and also I can select it the position of the slats. What they should move if the sh uh, shutter, the ref store goes to this 50%. Go to OK. And now you see I have made this settings. Send it to the frog. And now the frog is configured. By clicking one time, the shutter will move totally up or totally down. Or clicking two times on the in A connected button, it will move to. 50% of his position. And now you see, doing what it take time, maybe 10 minutes to do that, it's very easy to configure the system. And now you can do something additional. You can also have, maybe you have some uh, buttons installed in the system, in the, in the, in the system. And you want only control with this button system. They are not connected to a an, to an device or something like that. You go to this plus over there. You can select add frog. You can select an input frog. Like that one. You can go to OK. You maybe move it. You move it to the bathroom, and you see this is a frog who only have inputs. It's only the possibilities to connect some uh, button or switches with this, and you can also connect some sensor like a wind sensor, like a brightness sensor to it by using this input of the frog. So you want to control from somewhere else your lights in the in the living room. You just have to define the inputs which they would what they uh, should do click on it say button dim delete this type message and select the message like living one and with the both other inputs i want to control the shutters in the living Just to go to the go to the this question mark button, select what it should do, shut it up or shut it down. And you see if I make a typo, I'm not able to select to pre-select the message, which is a is a good control system that I don't have a typo in my in my uh, signal and I think the wrong one or something like that. So I've done this, write that to the to frog, and now I have on a different place the possibility to control my lights in the living room or move my shutters up and down. This is what it means we have a logical separation of the inputs and the outputs of the frog. Every frog is possible, has is, is possible to control the outputs of another frog. So it makes it very easy to, to configure the system like the way you want. And you can also easily do changes. Once you have set this configuration and maybe you don't want to control the lights living one anymore, just connect to the frog, go to it, and write there the signal of the light living too. Write it to the configuration, to the, to the frog. And then you have changed the configuration by a very, very easy way to do.
So one big advantage of our frogs is we have a very, very good um, control of the dimming function, uh, of the dimming of the LEDs which are connected to the outputs of the frog. Maybe you know there are very many, many, many LEDs on the market with many, many different firmware which make it difficult to dim them. For this, you can go to the D22 and you can move to this icon over there. You can see you have some upper and lower power watch functions which may be able to, to send you a signal to the system too. And what's very important is this over there. You just click on this line and now you moved to the dim editor, which makes you able to have some changings in your dimming curve of the frogs. You can select this grim, uh, dim curve or this other one, and now you can have some settings in this dimming curve. You can move these points up and down, which makes it very comfortable to, to, to configure the dimming curve of the frogs and have the, the best dimming curve which is possible to your device, to your lights you have connected to the output. You can also have a minimal, minimum dim value and a maximum dim value. You can go up to 1%, which may be not possible with the most of the LEDs, but you can also go to 5% and a maximum dim level. And you can also have an overshoot threshold, which make it possible to have a minimum dim value at the turning on of the lights by giving them a starting signal and just uh, make them just flashing and then you have it on the 5% dim level. I think that's a very, very good function to control many, many different kinds of LEDs. As you see, it's very easy to, to, to set up a, a project in the, in the, in the Frogbook project app. And what's also easy is to control it with the tab, uh, with the, with the, with the tablet. Therefore, this, you go to the project management and you see all your projects you have in your tablet and click on this and make an export of the file. You have to enter the password. Go to export project. And now you can find this project as a, in, 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 as a data file in the folder of your project app. And this project you can save on an external device, you can send it by mail, you can send it via airdrop or something like that. And what you can also do, you can copy it and move it to somewhere else on your iPad. No. Maybe to your home app, which make it possible to control the system. You can open the home bed, you can go to import project, you just click on enter project nine. But I make some mistake, I think. Now, normally it's been shown and you can select it, but maybe there is some problem with my iPad, but then you can see it here on the Frog Blue Home Ad and you can control your whole system with it. So that's my part. I'm finished now and I think the next part is uh, on Alesh's side. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Peter. Any work? Uh, 
uh, for your uh, very deep presentations. Uh, uh, I will now switch to other language. Uh, hvala i vama da ste se slušali, nadam se da ste, da ste uspjeli dobiti neku osnovnu informaciju uh, o tome šta, šta se radi, zašto ide tu. Uh, sad u tom dio koji slijedi, uh, Buštijan, moj suradnik će vam demonstrirati malo u live, tako da isto kao što kod, kod, kod Jorga može nešto isto ići naopako, ali to je live prezentacija. Uh, I tako evo, Buštijan, the stage is yours. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. I'm, Bo I'm Bostian. I will now present to you uh, the, uh, like, um, how can I put it, the practical version of uh, how can we live uh, live view this uh, uh, frog blue uh, in motion. So I'll now share the screen with you and try to demonstrate it with another camera, which is Mobotics. You will see me uh, at different angle. I will shut down my webcam and share it with you the screen just in a second. Okay, here I am. That's great. Um, we now have here um, this Frog Blue presenter, which is basically the thing. Uh, which presents like a real project like these are the switches uh with light functions or maybe uh shutter functions uh, to roll down the shutters or uh raise it up so this is different functions as uh just uh, york explained um uh, they're just uh like a regular switches just turn on in one click light one also light one here uh, two different lights light two we can also dim it like if you i hold i'm holding it it will go brighter and if i hold it again it will dim back also i can use it as a double click on one switch i can turn all the three lights uh as if i configured it and all three lights come on and on triple click i can just turn it off so yeah i can have here a st status function which brings all lights and all functions to status on now even if i click all of the switches nothing will work because it's always on this is this um, comes like an if statement like if statement in program language if this is always on then nothing else will work there is also function always off i can click any switch and it won't turn on okay there is a second switch which is like a doorbell just ring a doorbell and it will turn on okay also if you hold like this panic button it will start to blink okay so now you can see uh, my screen turned red like this red frame around this um, camera image this is the connection between frog blue and mobotics cameras i have this is this is the frog usb key to configure a project on a windows uh, pc but also this key can function as a FTDI um, transmitter from Bluetooth to USB port on the camera, on IP cameras. Many cameras can use this. And this is a terminal of a function. So this Frog Blue project uh, is sending some information to the Mobotics camera. Right now, there is one, this kind of thing, uh, plugged in on the back of the camera. And uh, it can also uh, uh, recognize a pre-configured um, commands. Like if I click this panic button and hold it, it will start on this screen. It will start to record and make a red frame on the edges. So maybe maybe we have uh, another function as a Mobotics camera. I will now switch to the two cam mode 
just a second. Okay, now you can see two cameras. On, on the left side, there is our parking lot with a uh, boom gate right here. I'll zoom at it. And now I'll press the door button, which is also the front door of our house. If I hold it, it will just uh, open the door for any person waiting for to enter uh, our building. But if I just click it once, you'll see what happened. OK, I clicked it and boom, Paul raises. OK, so this is one very, very practical function to use it with our uh, Mobotics cameras because Mobotics cameras has also the function to open the doors, to open any kind of uh, like these uh, gates and maybe garage doors or whatever. So yeah, this is one thing you can do with it. And also I can present to you the frog key. This is the transponder. Okay, I will switch to this camera right now. Okay, this frog key, which is also good to have because this is very much like magic wand of the frog blue uh, project system. Like this is transponder. If I click it, the light would turn on. If I rotate it and click it, the second light would turn on. If I click it again, it will turn back off. If I click it and hold it, it will dim. Raise up the level of the light. Also click again, dim back down. Also, second light, I can click it, hold it. That's great. You can do every function as uh, Jörg before explained, but with remote controller. So yeah, also this is great opportunity to show you again with function with Mobotics cameras, Okay, I will switch back at you to the parking lot. I will click, I will hold upside down this frog key and I will just click it and look what happens. Boom, boom pull again raises up. That's something you don't see at the other pro other products like this smart houses and smart object uh this is a unique feature of uh the frog blue so yeah that's it for my presentation i will switch back to my camera so i hope you learned some new kinds of stuff in a practical way so i'll hand it back to uh Alesh and our host thank you Thank you, okay. Thank you. Uh, nadam se da ste i to videli neku još širu priču koja može se uraditi sa, sa Froglom drugim produktima. Uh, evo, samo s moje strane bi bilo to, uh, sada prelazimo na ovaj dio gdje bi mogli ono što je bilo koja pitanje da se postavilo ili je bilo još otvoreno da se odgovara na njega. Uh, ali prije toga ja bi možda, ja bi možda samo, samo da, uh, evo, da još dam jednu je se tu vidi da vidio samo toliko da se par rečenica kaže na kraju kao jedan služetak toga integracija, sigurnost, skalabilnost i performansa Frog Blue-a na svim ovim područjima koje vidimo ispod mala žabica koja se stavila ili iza ili pored ili negdje u blizini može imati vrlo puno logičkih funkcija koje se međusobno, međusobno povezivaju. Jedno možda pitanje koje je isto sad postavio je zašto se zove frog blue, ali zelene boje. Zato zbog toga, ja blue je blue, bluetooth, jasno, frog i žabica zbog toga jer se informacije skaču iz jedne na drugu. Ne? A, a ja bi green dao barve zelene boje zbog toga jer je to stvarno low consumption priča. To sa ove strane, tako da imamo osvetljenje, imamo security, imamo 
ove, shuttering, imamo ventilaciju, imamo heating, imamo sve stvari koje možemo integrirati na početku nešto malo, a onda samo dodajemo priču koja je tu. Uh, opa, hvala sam Ok, što je vrlo bitno, na početku isto ovaj slajd ja, imao je, je Peter, bez fizičkih kabela, bez kontrolnih omarči, bez dodatnih modula za, za, za dodatne ploče, bez neke main centralne jedinice ako ne, ne želimo, bez IT infrastrukture, to se baš za tent koji je IT integrator čudno čuje, ali zato se baš zanima jer su to inteligentne priče koje možemo, možemo povezivati, ali ako ne želimo imati tih troškova ne, 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 može, ne, ne, ne trebamo imati. I 20 W za 100 modula, što je vrlo bitan podatak, ja mislim, u tom, u tom trenu. Sa displejem povezani smo sa, sa web serverom koji je na njemu i security koji je na njemu smo, ako želimo, povezani smo sa vanjskim svijetom. Što je za mene vrlo bitno tu da, da mobitelom, tablicom možemo izvana ili unutra to sve mi raditi, ali na kraju krajeva, ako mobitel zaboraviš negdje drugdje, kupa ori, ideš u spavaču sobu, trebaš neko drugo rješenje, da li to fizički, fizičko, fizičko uh, ovaj kontakter ili sa, sa ovim frog blue kijem, ili onda na kraju krajeva sa frog blue displayem. Ne? To ti je jedna priča. Vrlo, vrlo bitno za mene i malo i za sve je decentraliziran koncept. Ne? To, to, je, to je ono što je, da može raditi samostalno bez koje, koje, kakve poli ove ovaj main unit. Uh, Bluetooth, dobro, prezentacija, up, gdje smo sad mi, uh, sad, bi, sad bi ja otvorio diskusiju, uh, sad ide, imate, imaš ti nešto sabrano što su neka pitanja bila, uh, some questions uh, side, just to see. Yes, we have some questions, so let's start with that part. Firstly, uh, I will ask you the questions from the um, chat in the right side of the monitor uh, uh, on our platform. So then we will switch to those that uh, uh, people sent to us uh, to our reduction. You know. So Tarik Hosic is asking, uh, can I get some contact? I'm interested in a distribution. So yes, Tarik, I believe uh, you can get the contact after the presentations. So uh, we will contact, uh, connect you with the uh, Uh, with Alistro and with Peter as well. So later on, you, you can uh, talk about uh, Saradja. <laughs> the, the second one is Luka Jolic. He is also asking for the brochures uh, where they can be downloaded uh, as well for this presentation. So if you agree, maybe uh, we will deliver the presentation and we will provide Luca with those presentations and brochures uh, as well. So I think for these parts, so it is okay. Victor Manuel uh, Arroyo is also asking you to, the, to to get the presentation. So I I hope that there is no problem for this one. So I really did this is the, like successfully or not. So. Uh, Gregor, uh, Gregor is asking you, uh, can we set this? also as a time fi function to to say at 6 a.m it should go uh, up or down thanks so yes I think this is uh, for your question yes yes that's possible you can set it in directly in the configuration or you can do it as a scene using the display the frog display which is the central control unit mm -hmm. okay, you can uh, use the astro function mm -hmm. yes oh. Okay, so hopefully, Gregor, uh, you get it. Uh, Tarek is again, uh, he is saying that actually he has more questions, uh, but it's difficult to write here. So probably it's the best idea to connect with them later on. You can uh, cooperate and uh, talk about this one. So Tarek, samo slobodno, na kraju će biti adresa, pa evo, samo, samo slobodno, you can just šali nam pitanja. Yeah. We will answer it. Okay, great. <laughs> Yeah, what we want to do is um, if you contact uh, Alish at Tend, uh, once we have uh, some, some names, we can organize a more in-depth uh, webinar, seminar type thing to answer direct questions or uh, to go deeper into configuration and things like that. So just all the contact just have to contact uh, Alish and we will set everything up. 
Yeah. Okay, great. So can we go to the next one? So the question is, how did you arrive at the idea of using Frog as the name, see, for your product? So this is actually the, from the beginning of yeah. our conversation. So yeah. Um, that... Frog Blue came from two things. Uh, blue because of Bluetooth and Frog uh, because, okay, it's green, but also because the message um, it gets transmitted from frog to frog, so it actually hops from frog to frog, like a frog. So it hops from device to device, uh, and also the green aspect, as in we are environmentally friendly, low power consumption, we save on cabling, uh, we save on uh, power during in installation. So it's a mixture of all those things. Green environment, green is the frog. The message hops from device to device via Bluetooth. So that is the history of the name Frog Blue. Okay, so thank you, Peter. For that. that was additional explanation of what I did in, 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 in our language. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, the, good, the next question is about like uh, connecting to technology like in home and industrial or uh, like sets. So it is like this, when we uh, speak about smart technologies, usually we are thinking about homes, you know, but yet these products like promises to make the industrial premises just as smart as homes. So how did you manage those two things to bring together? Uh if I understand the question correctly, um, the the power of the frog system is basically the software. Software is very flexible, very adaptable. The products, the hardware itself is very, very robust. So whether you're using it in a home as um, a smart home device, it still has to be robust. It still has to be very safe because it is a home. Uh, also, by the other side, if you're using it in an industrial application, that robustness uh, and the intelligence of the system applies just as much to controlling machinery as it does to controlling uh, a domestic lighting system or ventilation system. Um, we have used them in uh, different industrial uh, projects or applications um, in wineries, in uh, food processing plants, because in the food processing plant, they wanted a system where they didn't have to have any switches inside the plant because it's just another uh, area for bacteria to build up. So Frog Blue was the ideal system for them. I, I hope I understood the question correctly. Yes, actually, that's, that's the answer correctly. And we have one more question uh, for the speaker. When it comes to those partnerships in the in these uh, countries here, so in the Adriatic uh, region, do you give uh, your partners some leeway or freedom in the designing the presentation of your offer in line uh, with the specific circumstances found in the local markets? Yes, certainly. Uh... In fact, it's, um, it would be interesting because perhaps uh, we could learn something from somebody else's ideas of how to present the product uh, or the concept. And that is one, that's a good example actually of how versatile and flexible the, the whole concept is because we are constantly learning of new ways to use the product and also when somebody sees the product for the first time and starts to learn about it, they think of things that perhaps we never thought of. Uh, like, for example, the uh, the industrial application in the in the food processing plant, we never thought of that. That was one of our partners who came back and said, "Can I use it for this?" And uh, we said, "Yeah, sounds sounds good." So, yes, we are always willing to listen and to learn from our partners. Okay, thank you, Peter. Uh, Vanya is also asking for brochures and uh, he's thank thanking to you to, for the presentation so, and for these interesting solutions. So uh, these are all the questions that we have here. 
Uh, and uh, here we have one, one, more, one more question from Tarek again. He's uh, asking, can we be involved in the development based on market requests? Again, that's the power of software. We can develop uh, new functions uh, for new applications. And also, one thing about FrogBlue that maybe I didn't mention is we have a very robust roadmap. We are already thinking about where we're going in the future. I said it was future proof. Uh, and again, that has a lot to do with basing the system on a combination of robust hardware, intelligent software, because our hardware can do many, many things that are not quite uh, available yet. So we do have a plan for the future. We do have new products planned, but we also have new software, which will enable the products that we have to do more. Uh, it's, um, it's every frog is, is then upgradable with the new software. The new software will be free of charge. Uh, so yes, we can, uh, but to answer the question, we do listen to our, our partners and to the market. And that is why, for example, we changed our opinion on not having a, uh, an internet access capability. So yes, we will listen and we, yeah, we encourage our partners to be involved. I can, I can confirm that also in the past, <laughs> the same team was working something else. You have to be pushy, but still, at the end of the day, uh, yes, they are uh, they are listening. That's the, that's the main point. Okay, so hopefully, Tarek, th this was an uh, answer for you. Okay. So, dear presenters, dear speakers. Uh, uh, sorry, I do have another one. So, uh, if you just switch to me, please. Can uh, you do that? Yes. Okay. You can see the slide, right? Because I do, I cannot see you. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, we can see. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I will now switch in the different language. Hvala svima da ste se uzeli vreme da u ovom periodu znam da je puno treba radit, da da slušat neki webinar možda po koji put nije baš prijatno, ali nadam se da ste naučili nešto novo, da imate neki potencijal koji bi bio za vas interesantan. Mi kao kompetentni centar za regiju stvarno su vam tu na raspolaganju i tu su vam sad podaci koji jesu za, 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 za kontaktirat. Uh, imamo isto frogblue.ba, frogblue.rs, ali još, još, još se radi na tome da se to da u pravi, pravi jezik. A sad tu jedna druga priča koja jeste, starter set. Starter set je, je, je jedna kombinacija welcome package ako neko odluči surađivat. Unutra ima imate dva frog, froga, i frog key i frog link za to da možete stvarno, stvarno puno toga napraviti, testirati, da se, da, da se još sami uživo uh, možete vidjeti kako stvari stoje, stoje i na podlagi toga možemo napraviti, uh, kao što je Peter isto predložio, jedan deep webinar za one koji bili zainteresirani. Ali, zato vam dajem sad jednu priliku da ajde štartamo regiju, uh, jer danas je Hvala AS Adri za organizaciju uh, ovog, ovog webinara. Je prilika i tri prve mailove koje dobijem za, na infofroglu.se šaljamo vama, vama ove besplatno starte setove jer to nam je u interesu da počnemo raditi s vama. Evo sada, evo. To, nismo napravili ankete, ali prvi dolazi, prvi, prvi dobije. Evo, toliko za, od mene. Hvala puno. Thank you very much. Aleš, Jedna stvar, ako može samo na ovoj zanimljivim slajdu na prezentaciji, ja mislim da je Frog Blue, ne? Uh, 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 Frog Blue, da, 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 ok, ok. Možda neko... Jeste, jeste, jeste. Oj, oj. Tako, so, I think this is not a big mistake. Ovo je Frog Blue, tačka si, pardon. Jeste, jeste. Ok, so no problem. Ok. Aleš, Boštjan, Jork, Peter, thank you very much for your presentations. It was so insightful. It was interesting, definitely. And we see that uh, participants or visitors to the webinar, they are also very satisfied for this. We want to thank you for participation in our webinar. And hopefully 
uh, you will get good cooperation here in Adriatic region. Okay, thank you very much. And we are very, very much looking forward to being there in person when it is possible again and have a physical event and meet you all face to face. Definitely, we are also aiming that. Uh, thank you very much, thank you very much. Already got five emails, so. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good. Okay. Go so, ahead. Don't worry, okay. everybody, svi koji želite, nema problema, naručite pa ćemo nešto dogovoriti. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Peter, okay. you're awesome. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.